He is good tonight. Praise the Lord. Glad to join you here at Christian Life Assembly. And we all said amen. amen. And stay tuned with us. We've got a message coming up here. We'll talk a little bit about uh, marriage and singlehood tonight. So we'll see uh, where the Lord takes us on that one. Let's give him glory right now. Join with us. We love Jesus tonight. We're going to sing that. This is an old one. I think everybody knows it. It's been around for a long time. It's got a great meaning. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Yes, amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. sharing a special tonight. It's a song that's been on my heart uh, for a while now, and um, <clears throat> it's just about seeking his glory, and it's called Let the Weight of Your Glory Fall. And if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17, if you look there at that verse, it's not in there, brother, so you don't have to dig it up, but it talks about we have light afflictions here, but we're looking forward to an eternal weighty glory that's going to fall on us. And I'm looking forward to that glory falling there, and we believe it can fall on us here. The Lord's going to send something good our way. Yeah. And so just worship with us. I just invite this, not let it, we're going to have the words up here, so I encourage you to sing with us here. Sing with me. I greatly appreciate it. But I just want to invite the presence and the weight of His glory. It may be, it may be a physical weight that it feels almost like sometimes, but it's that significance of how glorious He is. So let's seek Him tonight. Yeah.
Feel yourself in this church tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known be
you meet me back there too. And Lord, I thank you for your glory is great. You are worth it, Lord. You're very, your presence honors us here in this house. And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When we do leave this place, Lord, I just pray we take with that an appreciation of your presence going with us in a way, a realization of just how awesome that is. Thank you for it, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to share just a little bit about what's going on briefly in the church with us. And the speaker set up coming for the next few times. Uh, I'll be sharing tonight. Next Wednesday night is the plan. And then I'll be sharing on Sunday morning, and Brother Terry will be sharing Sunday night. And so he's got a message that he and the Lord, he says that is for him. And then uh, Sunday morning, a week and a half, we, my wife and I will not be here. We're flying out to Washington to see uh, her daughter, our, our daughter, and uh, we're going to have a good time there. And uh, Brother Gary will be sharing, and then Shelly, her sister Shelly, will be sharing that Sunday evening on the 8th. So just a little bit about what's coming up. On the speaker side, we did, I mentioned a family, a couple that's coming here. That'll be a little later on, but they're coming as well. This week, we do have the ladies' study. That's the 29th. We'll send out probably a reminder on the text tomorrow, but it is the 29th. Uh, this coming Friday at uh, 6.30. And so uh, Linda has the, the uh, message, is my understanding. So <coughs> we have a good time in the Lord. And then uh, the fishing trip is coming up this Saturday at 3 o'clock. And so that would be a wonderful time, too. Uh, there will be food. Uh, they plan kind of something of a potluck. Um, so, uh, but it should be a, a really great time and then sufficient as well at Lake Malone State Park. Uh, again, if anyone needs directions, we'll get you that together. Just let us know. Um, Brother Ruth and Gary, their discipleship. Uh, Brother, <laughs> Brother Gary and Sister Ruth, their discipleship is next Friday, the 6th. And then we, we continue on down the list. We've got a lot going on. And so we, we just um, give it all to the Lord and believe for good. The tobacco festival is October 14th. And so we have our booth. We, we've got all the paperwork should be here shortly. We'll probably be where we were last year for those that remember that. We'll, those that can help, we appreciate it. Um, and then the Halloween night's coming up as well. We talked about that. Uh, we've got several adults that are going to participate. So I saw some hamburgers. Is that for the fishing trip? I believe some, so. Pat, so I they're going to have so. hamburgers and then people bring the uh, sides and dessert, I guess. That is correct, Dom. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So great times coming up ahead. So encourage everybody, please keep the church in prayer. We need it. God, I believe, do good things, but he does those good things as we pray. Yes. All right. Let's dig into his word tonight. We want to dig into the teaching. We've been studying a bit in the book of 1 Corinthians, and we're going to continue on there. 1 Corinthians has several passages. He really had to instruct the church at Corinth because they were really struggling. And, um, there were a lot of benefits for us as well because we, we learn. And one of the discussions that comes up, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, has to do with marriage. And so we say we're talking about marriage and singlehood tonight. And we're going to dig in and just begin reading in uh, chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. So a little teaching tonight, but I believe it will encourage us. God wants to see good relationships in, in this church. He wants to see good relationships in our, in our community, in our nation, because that's really where the enemy wants to attack is our families and bring those down. We want to see the Lord raise up the families and, and minister. And how else can we do it unless we, he uses us as an example? <clears throat> Let's read. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for men not to touch a woman. Bible says in verse 1 and then in verse 2. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Let's stop and pray. Father, for your word, we thank you tonight. And we thank you that it is a light. Teach us tonight. We need you, Lord. Lord, we need your presence in the, in the teaching. Show us the light, we ask, that we can take it and use it when we leave this place. In Jesus' name, amen. You never know sometimes it's when it deals with marriage. Um, one of the couples that I worked with down at the uh, Korean church when I was youth pastor, it was a sweet couple. They were younger. They were a younger couple, a little older than I was at the time. But they were a younger couple, and they had a daughter. She was really nice. 
and everything. It seemed like the model family, right? They seemed great. They, they studied the faith together, and they um, participated in the church. And as the militaries go, families go, they moved out <coughs> after a little bit of time. But I thought, yeah, they're going to be they're going to be all right because it seemed like everything was good. Well, lo and behold, you can probably guess where this story is going. They were actually ended up in a divorce very soon after that because he cheated on her. And I just I felt so sad for their daughter. I felt so sad for the, for him uh, because it, it was just a, a difficult. And when he came back, I actually tried to help with the funeral for this the the gentleman's mom. And uh, he was just he was a mess. He was really a mess after that. And I, I tell that story to say this: Lord, help us not to take marriage and any relationships we have for granted. Because we can do that. We have to keep it. We say, oh, we got this. I've been doing this for a long time. But we can very quickly forget what has kept us for a long time and end up in trouble. Jesus made it very clear that he put marriage together. He's the one that instituted it, and it shouldn't be torn up. But we know that the world and the devil will try. We know that's just how it's going to be. And so we want to encourage us tonight um, to have good marriages, and if we're if we're single, that's fine. That the Lord will bless us in all our relationships, whatever they are. So, what's important in all this? So, I want to talk a little, just a little bit for us tonight about that that purity. That purity, verse one that we read. I'm thankful that in whatever relationships we have, the Lord can help us to stay pure. He is a holy God. We talked about. And because of who he is and that holiness coming into us, we can live right as well. He gives us the power to do so. And that extends over into relationships of this type, the, the marriage and other male, female, whatever other relations there are. And so what the church, and so if you read verse one, you can read it a couple of ways, but it seems to be, if you actually study this out, Paul here shifts the discussion to things that the church wrote him about. And so the second part of this verse, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, seems to be what the Corinthians actually wrote to him. And he's repeating it back. Does that make sense? Paul's not saying it's, it's, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. He's saying that's what they said. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit different. This is he's repeating what they said to him and then, so he, then he's going to explain that. And that's what he does in verse 2. And so that, that's a common question that comes up because the church had some, some things in common. You know, what's going on here? The, the Corinthian folks there had a, a kind of what a lot of people can do today. They go back and forth. You go way on one extreme or way over on the other. And so what they some of them were doing, it seems like, was, well, we don't even want to touch a woman. We don't want to have any kind of relations with a woman like a monk. That was what the, the Corinthians seemed to be doing. And some, if you read in the other parts of the book, they went way over on the other side to say, well, anything goes. Right? Any kind of whatever goes. Because, you know, God, God's uh, paid the price for me, so I can do whatever I want now. And so they would go either way. And so Paul's trying to work with them here and bring them together because that's not what, what he has. The way that we have all the passions of, uh, and, and life that we want to have is to have that come up in God's plan, and that's marriage. Marriage is that plan that God instituted uh, to have that purity in those type of relationships. And um, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good place. And we, we want to always encourage marriage, as Paul really is doing here. He's encouraging, hey, you need to have good relationships with, with each other. And we realize there's all kinds of issues where this comes up. Um, we talked a little bit about it the other day. One of the issues, of course, that we, we, we have to address it because it's really real in our world. Cohabitation, if you know what I'm talking about when we say that, living outside of marriage, very, very big right now. Um, and and all adultery, we could go into all kinds of ways that this goes out. But, but the Lord has put us together in marriage. He, had a good, he has a good plan. He's instituted it way back in Genesis, all the way back in the beginning. And that plan is still good for us today. And we want to encourage that. In, in, in this day as well, that the Lord has something good to offer through marriage. You can take all those passions and minister to those. And so what am I saying for us here? For those who are married, and I, I come at it from the other side. I'll talk about it in a minute. I used to come at it from the single side. Now I come at it from the married side, so I'm a little, it's a little bit different. A little bit different. But I find myself, for those, even in this church right here, that I end up trying to set an example. And I find that crazy because it's like, you know, 
I, sometimes you think, well, am I really married? You have to pinch yourself. But, but I, in my case, I, I am, and I'm thankful for that marriage. And it's something that the Lord has given me, at least in a good way, in part to bless the others that are coming up alongside behind, behind me. And so um, the relationships that happen, I believe he's called us to set an example. And uh, today the world is so full of immorality that we've got as a church set something different. And so many times we don't. We don't set something different. He's called us to. And, and Lord, help us to set a good example with our marriages so that those coming up behind us have something to model after. And I, I just I appreciate my wife if she's watching tonight. I appreciate her. And I believe we, you know, we're, we make a, a team to work together to encourage those that, that the Lord would have us encourage about marriage. And Lord, help us to do that. No marriage is perfect. That's not what we're saying here. Um, but he's called us um, to, to have something that's set apart, if you will, something different in our marriage and our relationship. And if, we, if we're single, he's still called us in our relationships to have something that's different and not have those things that the world has because there's so many ways relationships can go off the rails, but he's got something good when we set it apart for him. All right, let's keep going here. Verse 4, verse 4. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. So marriage not only should be pure, but the Lord is telling us here it should be selfless. The apostle wrote here that each spouse doesn't belong to themselves, but to the other one. And that means we have to have a, an increasing level of care for what the other person needs. So we can... One of the things about a message like this is you can insert probably lots of jokes anywhere you want to <laughs> on marriage. We'll probably get a little bit in, but I, I don't want to, uh, I probably have more I want to share, but we'll, I did want to share a little bit of a serious one. There was a, there was a board executive, he was a rich fellow that I read a story about, and the, the story goes that he was successful, but his wife was very sick. In fact, she got to a point where she really wasn't knowing a whole lot of what was going on around her. And so, but this board executive told the board of directors, hey, I'm retired. I'm going to take care of her. And the board told him, well, why are you doing that? She's, she's deteriorated to a point you, she's not even going to know who you are. And, uh, but the man said this, but I would know. And I made vows that I'm going to keep. I made vows that I'm going to keep. And so we, I thought that was an awesome story. And I believe it's true that God has called us to be that way where we're looking out for the other one. In the, in the relationship and it means we've got to come together not just in, it's talking about the you know the marital relations here in this passage but I believe these call us to come together on finances kids decisions whatever they are that we've got to come across um, working with the other person that we're looking out for their best needs is it hard <laughs> it is hard <laughs> I'm learning <laughs> it, it's a challenge um, I've told everybody that we're car shopping, and so sometimes there's differences of opinion when you <laughs> when you're looking for a big ticket item like that. Yeah, we just we just got through the house shopping part too. There are some differences of opinions, I'll tell you. Um, and, and some people like one thing and some another. I, I'll say this: I, I I really like carpet. I'll just use an example. I really like carpet. I think carpet. Is, I told people I hope my mansion in heaven has carpet in it because I really like it. But I, I looked at the builder. This was back when they were still building the house over here in my wife, and I said, I like carpet. And they looked at me like I had, you know, three eyes, right? They don't, people don't like carpet anymore. And so guess what? Our house doesn't have much carpet. <laughs> it's just something that we, we try to give in and work a little bit on to try to get, say, hey, I'm going to give a little bit of ground where we need to give it, where, where we can make it work. And so the reason I say that is the husband is the head biblically. Yeah, I could have said that, but... We, I believe the Lord's called us to work together where we can. Sometimes there, there's times we can't, but God has called us to work together to, to be where it's not each one that's on their own, but we're looking for the other person. Lord, help us to think of those creative ways and have those ways, whether it's um, words or gifts or the, the physical, like it says in this verse, that we give love to that other person and minister to them. He's called us to do that for those of us who are married. And so, Lord, help us not to take those relationships for granted. 
Amen. I, I still enjoy the Saturday night dates with my wife. They are a precious time. It's good to date. It, it really is, even after you get married. It's good to actually spend that time together. And I believe that's what this verse is talking about here. All right, so God's called us to selfless marriage. And he's also called us to put him first. Verse 5. Verse 5. It says, Do not deprive one another, except with consent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again. So Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So it says you can't really hold off on the marital relations, but who needs to be first? Him. Sometimes you got to step aside and say, hey, I need to come to the Lord. I need to fast and pray and seek the Lord, just like we sang that song. Seek first the kingdom of God. God has called us to put him first in all our relationships, whatever that is. And the, the Bible makes it clear that when we do that, he'll take care of the relationship that we're in as well. He'll take care of all that when we put him first. And that's something that I really feel like the Lord's been impressing on me. And um, we did it with Brandon, Brandon and Rachel's wedding. You have the sand ceremony, right? And brother, the brother that did our wedding here did the same thing. And so in other words, if you know what the sand part of, of some weddings is, you pull the sand together, and then one sand stands for God, and one stands for the husband, and one stands for the wife. And as the brother says, it symbolizes there really need to be three in a marriage, the husband, wife, and you we know who. And when we put him first, it makes all the difference. It all gets mixed together. I noticed when our move happened, our little sand that the brother made for us, it's all shaken together now. <laughs> and it all gets shaken up, no doubt about it. I'm thankful that he, if he's in it, if he's put first in it, it's going to be all right. We're going to make it. Why is this so important, especially today? If you could put those next verses up, the verse 29 and 30, Brother Woody. Why is that important for us to make sure the Lord is first? Well, he was telling them in that church this. But I say, brethren and sisters, the time is short. The time is short so that... From now on, even those who have wives should act, should be as though they had them. And in verse 30, those who weep as though they did not weep, and those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice, those who buy as though they did not possess. And you continue on, it says, this world is passing away. And that's true. We understand that uh, we've got to take care of our families. We have to take care of the things here because uh, it's important. But the Lord and his relationship above all, we realize that needs to be first place because everything else on this earth is temporal, but when we talk about him, it's eternal. Amen. It's eternal, and Lord, help us to keep that first. And, and it's hard. I mean, these are I'm saying things here that you know I'm having to learn myself and put into practice, but we can do it because he gives us the strength to do that. And I, I'm thankful that if, if we struggle in relationships, whatever type, the Lord can make those work. And for those that are here, when Brother Roy was pastor here, he would tell the stories a lot of how he, he and his wife really struggled, really struggled at the beginning. But then they got saved, and guess what? God turned their marriage around. They weren't throwing ditches. He was talking about throwing the ditches, dishes, and she'd scratch him and all. We, we, he mentioned that multiple times, let's put it that way. But then he also mentioned multiple times how, guess what? God is good, and that didn't happen anymore once the Lord began to work in their lives. He began to work that out of them. And, I, and my point is this, keep putting him first, keep, keep trusting him. Get, when we have him really enter the equation of our relationships, it's going to make the relationship that much better, even though it might not seem like it. And I'm thankful that a God first marriage, it's his plan and it's an awesome plan. Verse 8, so we're going to go back in the chapter just a little bit to verse 8. And I, let me say this about this, we, this is not in my, but time is short. <laughs> Amen. And I, I preach a whole message on time is short. It was for them. They were apparently under, going to be undergoing some persecution. And uh, time is short for us, too. We realize the days are getting closer to his return. We need to take it seriously. Talk about the, the weight of his glory, the seriousness of things. We do need to take it seriously, the relationships we have. And, um, you know, make sure that we, we put everything in its right place. Put the Lord at the top, and then he'll, he'll tell, take care of the rest. So I do want us to think, you know, hey, time is coming up short. And we may invest our time in, in those things that count. All right. And then I want to look at verse back at verse 8. And Paul wanted to write also to the folks here. But to the unmarried and the widows, it is good for them if they remain as I am. Verse 9. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. 
But it's better to marry than to burn with passion. Amen. So the, the apostle said it's good to stay in Mary. And it's and I, I want to say this because it was something I had to learn way back. It's no shame in being unmarried. And, and there's no shame in being a part. And if, if whoever's listening that that's there, um, if that's where God has you, praise the Lord for that. Because I've been with some folks, and maybe you have too, that you know, they were single, but they really, it was kind of like, when am I going to actually find that someone? And, you know, I hung out with somebody like that all the time. <laughs> I had to struggle with that, too. When am I going to find someone? But it, the Lord is good. It, wherever state we in, we're in, Lord, help us to have a peace about that, that he's got us where we need to be. And if we're, if we're unmarried, if Paul it says here, yeah, you're in good company. The apostle was unmarried. He says, hey, it's not a bad place to be at all because the Lord can really use us there as well, just like he can use those that are married. And so I want to encourage folks that... that the Lord, you're seeking, we're seeking the Lord for that. There's, there's no shame in it. We don't want to put pressure on ourselves. Because I believe the Lord's plan, we try to rush it sometimes, and it doesn't need to be rushed. I, I went to college when I was, my Bible college, where I went. The saying they had was, you need a ring by spring. You need a ring by spring. Because when you get out of school, you need to be married. And that was the prayer. That was what they said. And you better believe that there were plenty of them. That that's what happened. There were some pretty quick rings that came up. Um, I, some of them didn't even wait till spring. I was, it was the fall semester, I think, one time uh, where I was, and he lived across in the other dorm from me. And uh, lo and behold, he he was married before the semester was out and gone. I thought, whoa! <laughs> uh, and, and they were both gone. I didn't see them again. And then there were some marriages. They, you know, they're wonderful people. They love the Lord, but they really struggle with that because I think they really rushed into it. They let the emotions get ahead of where God was with them. And I just want to encourage us with that. It's like Paul said, we need to trust the Lord and just wait for him to work and not try to force it. Amen? Because sometimes we do. <laughs> sometimes we try to force it, but let him do his work. And um, I, I certainly didn't do this perfectly when I was coming up. But I'm, I'm thankful that the Lord has had mercy and I have a good, I have a good wife now. But I do want to say that it, it's good to let Jesus work in us and make us ready to be married, make us ready for whatever he wants to do in relationships. Um, because we can, whatever we are, the Lord can use that as an advantage. If we have a partner, God can use them to help the ministry. And if we're single, we have more time. I don't, I don't testify. So not, <laughs> it's more time when you're single. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I struggle, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be upfront with you. I, I used to do more visiting than I do now, and it's just there's just not time right now. I'm hoping that at, at the point that can change, but sometimes you know when, when you're married, you're just, there's just not the time there, and I have to give it to the Lord and make sure I don't feel a guilt about that. That's not from him. Um, and so I say that for this, you know, whatever state we're in, God can use you and me. He can use us for his plan. So don't let, don't let the, the well, if we're single, oh, wish I was married. If we're married, oh, wish I was single. We can't be like that. We're always where we don't want to be. We don't want to be, it seems like. But God can use us wherever we are. And he wants us, um, and, and, but in verse nine, we are reminded what he says you know, it is, it is okay to, to seek out a good relationship, you know, for burning with that passion, that he tells us. And so, Lord, help us and just to be prepared for whatever, single, married, doesn't matter, whatever relationships to, to be for his plan. So, there's no proverb that goes not in the Bible, but it goes like this. Before you marry, it's good to keep two eyes open. After you marry, it's good to shut one. It's true. It's true, man. So, Lord, help us to forgive each other and love each other in all our relationships and our marriages and work all we can on our part. As the Bible says, as much as it depends on us, let's live in peace with everybody and have, and have him build up good relationships because we need that in this church. We want to have us all together. We talked about being in one accord on Sunday night. We want to all be in that one accord wherever our relationships lie. Amen. And then it really begins in the, in the home, in the family. Lord, help us to be more like him. And I believe he'll, you know, if we need to track the right ones, we will. If we need to just keep blessing the one we're with, we will, if we need to be more like him. I want to pray for us tonight. As we said, everything, it depends on Jesus and keeping him first. And so wherever we are with the Lord, whoever's listening to this tonight, for the marriage really to be where it needs to be, we need to know, make sure that we're right with the Lord with so much else. He'll help us with so much else when we put him first. So I want to pray.
pray if anyone's in that place tonight that that needs to be there. If anyone's struggling in your relationships right now, the Lord is good to do it. He's good to bring you healing. We didn't talk about this in this passage, but if there's a need for forgiveness and if there's a need for just a healing in our hearts from some relationship issues, He's good to do it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, whoever tonight is listening to this, they just need you. They need a fresh touch of you. They're struggling in relationships of all types. Their marriage may be struggling. Their whatever other relationships are struggling, but they need you, Lord. And I pray that anyone that's listening that doesn't know you as Savior, they will find you as Savior and not wait because today is the day to make it right. Yes, for us, dear God, to know you, but also so much for our families as well, those we love. Lord, help us to be close to you, draw into you, and it'll make everything else so much sweeter. Oh, I just pray you work by your Holy Spirit. We cannot save anyone, Lord. We thank you that you've been saved completely, and we just believe that for those tonight that need to receive in Jesus' name. And Lord, I do want to pray for anyone that's struggling in the marriage, anyone that's listening that's struggling with some other relationship in their lives right now. Father, you know what to do. I know I don't have the answers, Lord, but I know you do. And I just pray by your Spirit you give wisdom in every situation. Because, Lord, we believe it's your will to see marriages prosper and to see them restored. And I just pray you bring restoration in marriages listening tonight in this church, in this community. Lord, yes, in this nation, in a nation desperately in need of healing here. We just pray that you do that, dear God, and restore as, as you're good to do to the highest and greatest point, Lord. Do it, we pray in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. We thank you that it's in that name that, Lord, you're going to take and work in us and in those we, we love and care about. pray this too. For anyone that's struggling with a unforgiveness or a difficulty that may have happened many years ago in a relationship or a marriage, I just pray for that one that's struggling with that. The enemy brings it up, but we want to say in the name of Jesus, Lord, you put it under the blood, and Lord, you give us the strength to forgive and the strength to love, dear God first loved us, and then we will have that, oh, the, the, the joy of these relationships return because you're that good. We ask this and believe for it for those who need it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For those listening tonight, we love you. If there's something going on in your life, he's God. Give it to him. He bears all our burdens. If you need to talk to us, we glad to hear from you. For those out there that watch us regularly, we love you. For the Dave and Jamie, we're praying for you. Continue to believe for God's touch. Sister Opal, so many others I know that are watching us. We love you. We'll see you soon. Let us know you're watching. Love to hear from you. God bless you.